Welcome to our lecture online. This per particular advanced JE problem deals with voltmeters and current meters, and those are notoriously difficult to comprehend. So here we have the problem. Let's read it first. Two identical moving coil galvanometers, I guess there's two of them, so put an S there, have 10 ohms of resistance and have full-scale deflection at two microamp currents. So they usually require very little current uh, to have full-scale deflection and they have relatively small resistance. One of them is used as a voltmeter to read 100 millivolts at full scale and the other one is used as an ammeter or a current meter with 1 milliamp full-scale deflection using the appropriate resistors. These are then used to measure the voltage and current in an Ohm's law experiment where the resistance is 1,000 ohms and they're using an ideal cell. Now, an ideal cell is a cell that doesn't have any internal resistance. Then which of the statements is or are correct? Could be one, could be all, could be a few of them. All right. Before we try to answer the question, let's draw the circuits of a voltmeter and a current meter with a galvanometer. So first, a voltmeter. We have the galvanometer. It has a resistance of 10 ohms, and we have to put that in series with a resistor, and then that will then be used to measure the resistance or the volts across a resistor, for example. So in this case, we're going to, we're going to measure the voltage across a 1,000 ohm resistor. All right, so... We need a full scale deflection of 1 milliamp and 100 millivolt full scale. So the full scale will be 100 millivolt. So full scale is 100 millivolt, which is equal to 0 0.1 volt. And uh, that will happen at a current of 2 microamps. So the current will be equal to 2 microamps. All right. So we expect this to be a very big resistor, so we could pretty well ignore the 10 ohm resistance. All right, so we use Ohm's law. We can say that I is equal to V over R, or in this case, R is equal to V over I. Now the voltage is the full scale voltage we want of 0 0.1 volts, so that's uh, 1 times 10 to the minus 1 volt, divided by the current, which is 2 microamps, which is 2 times 10 to the minus 6 amps. So that would be equal to 0 0.5 times 10 to the fifth ohms, or 5 times 10 to the fourth, which is 50,000 ohms. So what they want is they want a resistor of 50,000 ohms. And then if we read part A, they say the resistance of the voltmeter will be 100,000 ohms. But no, we need a 50,000 ohm resistor. That means that A is not correct. How about B? The resistance of the current meter will be 0 0.02 ohms to two decimal places. All right, so let's draw a current meter. So a current meter puts the resistor in parallel. And the reason why we want in parallel is because we want most of the current to go through the resistor, not through the ammeter. So, we know that the voltage across both will be the same. And here we know that we have a 2 microamp, two microamp current and a 10 ohm resistor. And here, well, we want a 1 milliamp full scale, so 1 milliamp full scale. And the resistance, well, we don't know what that is, but we know that the voltage will be the same. The voltage of 1 equals the voltage 2. Using Ohm's law, we know that the voltage is equal to the current times the resistance. So here we can say that I1, which is 2 microamps, times 10 ohms is equal to 1 milliamp times R. Solving this for R, we can say that R is equal to 10 ohms times the ratio of 2 microamps divided by 1 milliamp. The ratio here, this is a 1 milliamp is, two th is a 1,000 microamps. That's 1,000 microamps, which means it's 1 500. So that's the same thing as dividing this by 500. So divide by 1,000 times 2, which is equal to, divide by 1,000 is 10 milliohms times 2 is 20 
milliohms. So the resistor we need is 20 milliohms, which is 0 0.02 ohms for the ammeter. So when we read part B, the resistance of the ammeter will be 0 0.02. We say that this is indeed correct. So the second part, part B, is indeed correct. All right, now, the measured value of R will be between 978 and 982 ohms. So we're measuring this resistance right here. And what will that resistance be equal to? Well, notice we have two resistors in parallel. So that gives us an equivalent resistance. So this whole thing will give us an equivalent resistance. So in, in parallel, we know that R total is equal to the product over the sum. So in this case, the two resistors will be 50,000 times 1,000 divided by the sum of the two, which is 51,000. Now notice that 50,000 divided by 51,000, well, we can double that. That's equal to 100,000 divided by 102,000 times 1,000. Here I can see that this is about a 2% reduction, so minus 2% because this is roughly about 98% of 1,000. So we're subtracting 2% of the real value. 2% of 1,000 is about 20. So that means that we'll read about 980 ohms. And does that match what we're looking for here? The measured value will be between 978 and 982. And so the answer is yes, it'll fall within that range. Finally, what's going to happen is we're going to take the battery that's here, and replace it by a real battery that has a 5 ohm internal resistance. So now we add another 5 ohms to that. So 5 ohms added to 980 gives us 985. And then they tell us that the measured value will be over 1,000. But that's not true. With the additional 5 ohm resistance, we now have an equivalent of 985 ohms, which is less than 1,000. So D is not correct. So you can see that it's kind of tricky to work with voltmeters and current meters. You have to know that with a voltmeter, you put the resistance in series with the galvanometer. With a current meter, you put it in parallel. So then you realize here that I equals V over R, or R is V over I. We have the full-scale deflection of 1 tenth of volt divided by the full scale current of 2 times 10 to the minus 6 amps or 2 microamps. So we get a resistor of 50,000 ohms. Here we put it in parallel. We note that the voltages must be the same. So the current times the resistance equals the current times the resistance. Solve for R. We get 20 milliohms or 0.02 ohms. And then finally, the equivalent or resistor we get from reading the actual resistor in the circuit and the resistor in the voltmeter. They're in parallel, so we use the product of the sum. And you can see that that means that instead of reading 1,000 ohms, we'll actually read about 98% of that, or about 980 ohms. And finally, when we replace the battery, the ideal battery that has no resistance to a battery that has 5 ohm resistance, it simply adds 5 ohms to the 980, giving us 985, which is still less than 1,000. That makes D not correct. And that is how it's done. I don't think you can do this in three minutes, but how long did I take? <laughs> a lot more than three minutes. All right, so you can see this is a pretty tough problem, especially if you only get three minutes to do it.